Welcome back to the 13th episode in creating a third person controller. If this is your first time seeing this, check the description. There's an entire playlist that you can follow from the beginning. Today, we're going to be putting a limit on how long our character can sprint for. Currently, the capsule can sprint indefinitely, like I could in my youth, but these days I can barely manage five seconds. So let's bring this capsule character down a peg and limit how long it can sprint for. Quick favor before we go, hit the like and subscribe if you find this helpful. Want the whole course right away? Support me on Patreon or join as a channel member for instant access. If subscriptions aren't your thing, grab the full course on Udemy and own it forever. Links in the description, let's get coding. We can sprint forever. We don't ever run out of stamina or anything like that. So let's look at how we can uh, control that within our state machine. Now we're going to go back to motion because we need some variables. And the first one is going to be a static variable called sprint remaining. And it's going to be a float and it's going to be equal to, uh, let's go with zero um, because we need to also create a constant called sprint duration and it's a float. And this is just gonna be the amount of time that you can sprint for. And so typically we want this to be something like three seconds, two seconds, whatever you feel is right. It's really up to you. So that'll just be the time in seconds, sprint duration and sprint remaining, perhaps in the ready, just for the sake of the example, even though I think I prefer it to start off at zero and re replenish itself. Um, we're gonna go uh, sprint remaining is equal to sprint duration, right? So we have three seconds automatically at the start. And so in the ready function, all we need to do is during the update, we need to subtract Delta. So we can go sprint remaining uh, minus equals Delta, right? So we're going to be subtracting Delta every frame. I don't know if you're aware of what Delta is, but Delta is essentially the time between each frame. So it is, the amount of time elapsed between the last frame and the current frame. And so it is essentially just a measure of time. So we can just subtract that and we will get pretty close to three seconds. Ultimately, um, there is actually a few different ways of dealing with time in Godot. You can use timers, you can use get tree create timer, right? Get tree dot create timer. Um, and then you could put like your sprint remaining sprint duration in here and then on expiration you could um, exit the state or something like that um, all of those things are all valid ways of doing it they essentially all just use delta right so that's the best way to think about it is um, using they're all using delta to subtract whatever number that you've given it to get down to a zero point so you can also like you could i don't know if it inherits node i'm actually not too sure if you could make it a chart of this uh, i don't think you can since it ended up over there uh, repair no maybe but the point is you could put a timer in here and have it have a callback and all that kind of stuff uh like i said it's the same it's all the same so it doesn't really matter which one you use it, it all mostly depends on circumstance so the reason why we will subtract delta here is because we're within a state and having a signal callback on a timer is actually really inconvenient for us because they can actually trigger even if the um state isn't current uh so that can be a real big problem. You would need to do like a uh, current state check in the state that you're in to make sure that code doesn't trigger, which isn't really the point of having a state machine, if that makes sense. So that's why we're going to use Delta here. Um, and Delta, I'm, I'm not trying to say that Delta is um, better than using a timer. It just depends on the circumstance. So try to remember that when you're dealing with time, it's whatever you feel is right for the particular situation. And in this situation, we're going to use Delta. Okay. So we can pretty easily say then at this point, if sprint remaining is less than or equal to zero, then we need to go back to the finished. We can go finish.emit and go back to run. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Now we should be able to see this in action pretty much immediately. There won't be any way for it to replenish right now. So we've got run. And then we can press that and we should see in three seconds that we go back to run and we have gone back. Now we are not resetting the uh, FOV. So just remember wherever you exit, you have to you have to admit the sprint ended uh, signal so that the camera knows to return back to the, its normal state. So now we can do that and we're back and we're going 
uh, run speeds. Okay, so that works pretty well. Now, how do we prevent, actually, let's get back into this. So what, do we, what happens when we run out of sprint? Do we just go straight back? And the answer is we do. We can no longer really enter sprint just by the nature of it. It does mess with the camera a little bit and we'll get to dealing with that in a second um, because we can check in the idle state and in the run state, probably more like the run state because that's where we get that. We can actually check to see and uh, sprint remaining is greater than uh, 0.5, something like that. Uh, have like a limit, maybe 0.1, then, then you can get to sprint. So now you shouldn't be able to ever get to sprint. You'll just um, get stuck in run forever until we actually make it a way to um, get into sprint again. So get, we need to somehow restore this number, right? Uh, so we can go back to motion, right? And realistically, it's just a simple function and it's gonna be called replenish sprint. It's gonna take delta, which is a float, and it's going to return void. I'll just put pass there for a moment. Okay, so we can pretty easily increase that. We can restore it at the same rate. So basically you have to wait three seconds for it to be full again. Um, you could have like a, a higher rate. Uh, you could just multiply delta by a certain amount, um, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. So um, we can go sprint remaining equals, and we're gonna go um, the min of either the sprint duration, or sorry, it's sprint remaining plus delta or the sprint duration, right? So we can just clamp that under sprint duration. And just to make sure that this is uh, working properly, I'm just gonna put like a sneaky little print here. Sprint remaining. That we can see that in action. And so then you need to decide when you actually replenish sprint, right? So obviously in the run, I think that's fine. Replenish sprint, gonna pass in the delta and probably in the idle as well, that makes sense, right? So we can call that function in the update here. We can just go replenish sprint and then pass in delta. And now when we run, now, now when we run the game, it's gonna be three the entire time. And now we can sprint and you can see it start to restore itself and it gets back to three. So it's pretty cool. As long as you're over half, you can start running again. So um, let's just remove that uh, printout. Okay, so that is how you create your sprint. Uh, that's pretty much it. We've got, the, um, we've got the signal, we've got an amount. Interestingly, you could probably extend at this point. I'm just realizing that um, you could, in theory, by toggling the sprint. That's actually kind of a cool feature, to be honest. If you just, uh, <laughs> you could probably do that for a really long time because we don't, we're not actually depleting the sprint while we're jumping. Now that is entirely up to you if you want that to be possible. I think it's kind of fun, so I'm gonna leave it. But uh, if you do want to remove that, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just need to actually reduce the sprint remaining during the sprint fall and um, the sprint jump. So if you just go here in the update, we're not going to actually exit the state because we've already decided that we don't exit unless um, we are no longer pressing the button. So we'll just go back into sprint and then we'll let the sprint do the check. So if you run this now, um, and we are pressing this. Eventually we should run out, yeah, there we go, um, of sprint and we have to wait. So really up to you how you wanna go about that. I guess I'll just leave it like this now since I've done it. But that is um, the full sprint state with the, both the sprint jump and sprint fall. Uh, we're getting along pretty well at this point. Um, we can put in an aim state next so that we can control the uh, exit aim and enter aim via the state machine and I think we'll make the character slow down a bit instead of uh, running around and sprint jumping everywhere. That might be fun. All right guys, that's all for this week. Next week, we're going to be looking at creating a state for aiming.
If you are finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get access to all the episodes, you can become a channel member or you can join on the Patreon. If you want to get access to every single episode without paying a monthly fee, then you can always buy outright on Udemy. Other than that, I'll see you guys all next week.